any team up with Mr. Musk? Uh, not at the moment. You know, I used to run into him from time to time when he ran around CU Boulder. Uh, he recruited for SpaceX there. His brother, Kimball, also lives in Boulder. Uh, you know, very nice guy, a little quiet, very uh, in his own head. And he's certainly grown enormously. Back when I saw him at CU, he was a, uh, you know, he was a known commodity, uh, but he wasn't in the popular milieu as he is today. And he's a really interesting guy. Just so many things, so many different things. Uh, and Elon is really the front guy for movements that he constructs and delegates to, whether it be Tesla and what they're doing with their AI projects, uh, or it be, you know, the boring company and how they're spalling out tunnels underground, or it be Neuralink and they're building implantable brain devices. And by no means is, does he have a monopoly. I mean, he's, other people do battery cars and other people do reusable rockets and, you know, other people do brain implants. In fact, there's one that just came out uh, called Neuralgate. It's been around for a while and uh, they have these two devices they put in, thought to text, 90 words per minute for uh, quadriplegics and shut-ins. Uh, so uh, what's amazing about Musk is that he can live in two worlds where he can live in the engineering world and actually do product management and build products, but then he can live in the Steve Jobs hype world and market things and bring money to those endeavors and convince people to stick around, even though the tail is long. You know, oh, the Tesla is just around the corner, just around the corner. And actually, they make great progress. The Model S is out and, you know, autonomous driving is getting much better. But that's a very long tail. And it's going to take decades to fully realize that tail. But yet he's able to attract the capital passion and fanboyism required to do that. And then... The key is just to get out of the way and let the engineers do the job. And so far, he seems to be able to do that. So uh, Musk is effectively a conduit that transforms things. Uh, and he seems to be able to do this in industry after industry after industry. The only one he's tried and failed, in my view, is the cryptocurrency space. I don't understand the whole Dogecoin thing. And I don't think he proved any point or gained any accolades by dipping into the space. And there were many areas where I think he could have been significantly more productive uh, and really achieved a lot. Um, and he had the resources to do it. But, you know, he's, uh, he's a unique guy. And we need more unique people. You know, um, people are so obsessed with correctness or a template or completely accurate conduct. Society is made up of many people from many different wakes of life. And what makes everything great is diversity. So I like having Musk around, warts and all. Yeah, I see this. Uh, Musk is definitely the stupid person's idea of a smart person. So there are some videos on YouTube that make that case. And I don't think that's, uh, that's true. He's a smart person. He's not a super genius. You know, super genius is like Eric Domain or Terry Tao, uh, and it's very rare, and it's it's exceedingly, uh, you see it in just raw problem-solving ability and creativity output. But the skill set that Musk is a sovereign in is his ability to translate an idea of a future, whether that's original or not, is completely beside the point. An idea of a future to the mainstream and convince them that he's the proper shepherd to take that idea and get it done through some black box. Okay, the, the mainstream doesn't really care about the scientific nuances or the problem solving capabilities. They just are confident. And so any person who has that ability, if they know how to harness it in a capital market sense, uh, will get billions of dollars. Now, if the intent is ethical, uh, they end up um, basically building great things over a period of time. If it's unethical, you end up like Elizabeth Holmes with uh, Theranos. So you can definitely go in different directions, but it's a very rare skill set that Steve Jobs had and Musk has and Holmes has and so forth. And it's really just the target and the will and the time horizon and how long they can keep the show going while they're building to that time horizon. And if what they're chasing is actual solvable, it will get solved. Uh, great leaders do this. You know, JFK says, we are going to go to the moon. That was the original scam because at the time he said it, there was no capacity in the United States to actually guarantee that it was going to get done in 10 years. It required superhuman effort uh, to actually get us 
through the Apollo program, and we barely got it done, you know, 69. Uh, super, super human effort. So, uh, you know, Musk has that same ability. And, um, and if he's caged right and focuses it right and surrounded by people that ground him in some form of reality that's achievable, uh, then uh, it will be enormously beneficial to humanity. Where it gets dangerous is when promises and commitments are made for things that aren't necessarily achievable or they're just frankly very dangerous. I'd say of all the ventures he has, Neuralink is probably the closest to that in that respect. Um, drilling holes in people's brains and putting implantable medical devices, this is uh, the most invasive thing you can do and it's the most dangerous thing you can do for humans in a certain respect. And so there has to be an enormous level of caution, ethics, and wisdom. You can't put that on a Silicon Valley, we're gonna move fast and break things mindset. That's something that's a multi-generational, multi-decade endeavor that you gradually build up to. Uh, and, uh, and so the same things that built Tesla, I don't think are good to apply to Neuralink. It has to be done in a very different way. And I'd argue in a completely open source way as well because of the nature of the technology.